Okay, let's look at these notebooks. So the order that I'm going to go in is from the notebook that was least compatible in my pen and ink test to the notebook that was the most compatible in my pen and ink test. And there are going to be a couple of surprises. Uh, one of them is, and I'm just going to give this one away at the first, the most expensive notebook is the one here on top. And it uh, had the most issues with different pens and inks. Now let's look at the notebook first. First, a uh, very attractive notebook. This is mint green. It is 60% uh, recycled. This one is college ruled because that's what they had in stock. And uh, 80 sheets. It has a very nice uh, thick cardboard cover. I think the spiral is nicely done. And what appealed to me besides price is that the paper is a nice almost ivory color and I like that and it's really nicely done. Just everything about this notebook is is nicely done when you're looking at something that is less than four dollars. It's perforated, all that good stuff. So this is the best one from an aesthetics point of view. It's the best looking of all of these. Uh, it is the most presentable paper as far as the paper itself and that is what drew me to it. And so I was really, I had high hopes. Let me see if there's any information you want here. I had high hopes that this would turn out to be just an awesome, awesome notebook. And it's only an okay notebook. Um, it is a great looking notebook. And it uses soy-based ink and it is made in Taiwan. I'll let you know where all of these are made because that is a factor for various reasons. But from an ink factor, one of the things I look for in budget paper supplies, especially cheap paper and cheap notebooks that I'm just going to use day-to-day uh, -day or for testing pens, things like that, and, and homework for me. I, I look at where they're from because countries where they still have the highest number of fountain pen users, I have found tend to, of course, it's logical, produce the paper that's the most fountain pen friendly. So I had high hopes from the home of Twisby, but let's look at the results. So each of these, I have just a random assortment. It's whatever pins were around me at the time where I have written with them, but I tried to do some variety. So this one actually has some roller balls and uh, some other pins thrown in. And I have uh, a Uniball 1. That actually did very, very well. No issues whatsoever. A Jin Hao. This is the wrong ink. This is not uh, Diamine Oxford Blue. That's why there was an asterisk there. James, go look it up later. That's what that was for. This is actually a Jinhao Blue cartridge. It wasn't what I thought it was. So uh, that ink actually did quite well. And that's with a bobby nib, which does spread the ink out a bit thinner. And uh, I, I have fewer problems with a bobby nib bleeding through, even with same inks on same papers, uh, but different pens. Sharpie S-Gel performed well. Pilot V5 went through this... Uh, Badly, but I find that the Pilot Precise V5 goes through a lot of things badly. Um, the Hong Dian Hong Dian H3 with uh, Monteverde brown sugar. Let's see here. It it had some bleed through as well. I actually don't get that very often. That usually is a pretty reliable and well performing ink on a lot of papers, but it did come through on this one. And uh, Platinum Preppy did fine with a uh, medium nib. The Pilot Petite 1 uh, with a Pilot Petite cartridge. Let's see here. Is that, what is that? Did that go through? Surely not. That never goes through. It did. It went through. Well, Pilot, sorry. Uh, Pelican Green went through badly. That probably, on this paper, the worst performer was Pelican Green. A, a pretty reliable ink, but this is a pretty wet nib. Uh, that's ballpoint, doesn't count, just because it's not going to bleed through anyway. And this Caveco with a Birmingham Blue cartridge did great. Uh, the Capless with Compeki did great. Wingsung with Ruby Red did awesomely well. No bleed through except for maybe one, two little dots where uh, the line crossed over, making a letter. And that's a pretty, even though it's a fine nib, that's a pretty wet ink and well-saturated. Lamy All-Star Medium with Monteverde Caribbean Blue did come through, and that actually rarely happens with that ink, but you see a few bleed-through dots, and the same with the Wingsong with Diamine Oxblood. So, 
There you go. That's This is the worst, though. And basically, this is why I have the front page in a new notebook with paper that I've never used before. I always do the first page, or I might do it at the very back page, an ink and pen test page. If this is not something you do to test them, uh, trust me, it saves you from disappointment later because this narrows down which pens, which inks, which nibs are going to be safe as you work through that notebook if you're somebody like me and you're swapping pens all the time. That helps you narrow that down. So really, that's the only issue. It's pen picky. You're going to have to find which pen and which ink works with this paper. And once you find it, as you can see, there are some sweet spots very well with the with the Uniball and the Sharpie S-Gel. S-Gel goes through a lot of even more expensive papers, so that's good. And then uh, a few others of these inks performed well. You just learn as you go. For $3.97, still an awesome notebook, really nice looking, uh, good notebook, just a little bit pen and ink picky. The next is Walmart. This is Pen Gear. This is kind of an in-house brand. They contract this out to different suppliers. In this case, uh, some company, unknown to me, from India. Again, I saw it. It was very inexpensive, and I said, India, lots of fountain pens. I bet you they know what they're doing with the paper. We'll come back to that. So this is 100 sheets. It has the nice, you know, plastic uh, cover that lasts a long time. Not necessarily pretty, but they last a long time. And it's top bound. The number one reason I own this notebook is that it is top bound. For those of you left-handers, they know that's a good thing for you. I'm right-handed. I still like top bound better because I use, when I find a pen that can write on both sides without giving problems, I use both sides of the paper for a lot of the things that I do so that I don't burn through notebooks just ridiculously quickly. And so I like it when uh, it's top bound. I hate writing when I flipped it and then the spiral is over here. I don't like that. And you left-handers, of course, know that even better than I do. Any information on the back? No. Do you see that? Uh, cardboard. This again, college rule because that's what they had in stock. And I've done a dozen pens here in various inks. A little bit blue heavy, am I not, this week? Uh, but how did they perform? That's the big question. And when we flip this over, you can see I've already been using this for some work, making a different video for uh, my, my work channel. Uh, and the Uniball one again here did just fine. This pen, what is this pen on the fourth line? That's the Pilot V5 again. You see, the Pilot Precise V5 uh, bleeding through, not even a fountain pen, although, you know, it looks like it has fountain pen DNA when you look at it. Uh, then the next three pens, what are those? The next three pens after that, that Jinhao again, which again, I misidentified which blue cartridge was in that because I never used the cartridges that are in that, and so I thought surely it was this other. Uh, the Caveco Perkio, which is a Birmingham Pen Company blue cartridge from back when they sold those, and that performed well, usually does. And then you look at the Twisby Eco with what, I wasn't sure what was in it, but I know what was in it now. This is because of my, my little notepad that has all the what's in this pen, and I are not always in the same zip code. Um, the Twisby Eco has Robert Oster Fire and Ice, and that goes through cheap paper uh, like a sieve most of the time, as it did here. Uh, the next one, of course, Diamine Oxblood, which sometimes does as well, went right through. Uh, the Lamy All-Star, which rarely does, but did in that notebook, and did in this one just a little bit. And the Monteverde Ruby Red, even just the tiniest bit of bleed through, just a little bit, just a little bit. And then Diamine Chocolate Brown, good performer, no problem there. And uh, the Konpeki, just, just a touch of bleed through. So this was also mixed results, uh, but is it does come with a top spiral binding. And so I still wanted you to know about it, even though not the best performance, but it is a handy notebook. And this notebook was a dollar sixty-three. For a dollar sixty-three, uh, I think we can overlook a few things and just find a happy pin for that that spiral, right? Now we get to what will be a great surprise. This, I like composition notebooks a lot. I like graph paper a lot. 
And so when I saw this at, uh, let's see here, it says Office Depot, but it was actually at whatever, what's the other one? There's Office Depot and Office Max. I actually bought it at an Office Max, uh, but they'll have it at either one. That's what you need to know, right? So I bought this there for a whopping $2.95, the second most expensive. A little high for a composition notebook, but hardly high, right? But I bought it because this is made in Vietnam. And Fountain Pen Community knows made in Vietnam when it comes to fountain pen friendly, inexpensive notebooks is usually a good sign. And so I plopped down my my two ninety five and I got this notebook and how did it do? Well, let's see how it did. This is really for, let me just say, for a cheap composition notebook, the, the plastic cover is nice. This is done nicely. Uh, it's, it's not bad at all. It has a blank page, and then this is my test page. And let me say, before we get into the results, one of the things that I noticed about this right away, graph paper for me, cheap graph paper, seems to often be not just fountain pen unfriendly, it's just like pen unfriendly, period. Rollerball, forget it. Fountain pen, forget it. Uh, just cheap, nasty stuff. Uh, I've gotten graph paper that was more expensive than this, where even just from page to page, the ink they used to print the graph was inconsistent and sometimes had feathering problems and things like that. It was, it was pathetic, pathetic. Uh, graph paper I often find, for whatever reason, is just junk. And uh, so when I find it to be good, I'm happy about that. I found some good stuff at Daiso, and then this uh, is as well. And you see I have a higher variety of ink. And let me start at the top here by telling you this Twisby Swipe. Love that pen, by the way. Uh, the Twisby Swipe with Noodler's Turquoise. I have to be careful about what pen I write or what paper I write on with that because it's a wet medium nib or fine nib. Uh, a really wet fine nib looks medium, doesn't it? And puts a lot of ink on the page. And because of that, uh, it goes through a lot of paper. But 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 it didn't. It didn't at all. In fact, I want you to look at this. There is only one pen. Nope, nope, two pens. Two pens at all where there was any bleed through. It still was only a little. And both of these pens uh, tend to, and, and both these pens and both these inks, especially the inks, are going to tend to do this. The Mandarin Orange, because it's in a flex pen, the Can Write Flex Nib. And this Hongdian 660, pretty well behaved pen, but not with this ink. This ink tends to, to do this every now and then, just at the very beginning. But then the whole rest of the line behaved fine. So, you know, I don't know what was going on there at the beginning of the line, but there's a little bit that went through. Nothing, nothing else had any bleed through at all. And that is impressive. So there you go. A, what was that again? $2.95, Office Depot, Office Max. Really, really good find. And then you're going, wait, and that wasn't the best? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, it wasn't. So we're going back to Walmart, and we're going back to India. And here we go to the Pen Gear Composition Notebook, which they offer, as you can probably tell from the cover, in a dot pad. Love me a dot pad. Uh, and, you know, a lot of us, have, we spend several dollars on particular notebooks that are dot pads. Uh, but you don't always then want to burn through those that fast for certain things. You want something a little bit cheaper, a little less expensive, but you still like you gotten spoiled with your dot pad, right? So very simple, comes in several colors. But this is my favorite in today's video when it comes to value. So very similar to, even though that was made in Vietnam and this is made in India, very similar to that other notebook, uh, except dot pad. Again, their own printing on this paper is very nicely defined, and that's a good sign. Uh, seems to be well put together for the price that I paid, and uh, another variety of many of the same inks yet again, along with a few others that are that are uh, got here even a, a 1.1 millimeter stub. How did this do? Quite, quite well. 
So as you look here, again, you can, you can see what's written on the other side of the page most of the time. Can't read it all, but you can see it. That's been true on every single one of these so far. But the only bleed through at all is right here on this R and right here on this W. Um, there could almost have been here, but it doesn't. It doesn't come through. That is impressive because what are those two things? The Twisby Eco with the fire and ice and then the uh, Twisby 580 with the stub, which I think, I think is Wisdom Purple. Again, books in another zip code. But these are pens that go through things all the time. These are inks that go through things all the time for me. And even here, you have one little dot and one little dot. And uh, this dot is not even ink. That's something that's smudged on this side. That's it. Excellent, excellent, excellent uh, performance. And you notice I haven't written anything else in this notebook, but I have another one of these that I've written in quite a bit. And the, the results I see here are indicative of longer, greater use. So this... This for me wins it in terms of value for the money. Whoa, did I tell did I tell you what the value for the money was for this made in India Walmart buy? This was a dollar and six cents. That's winter 2021 inflationary Walmart dollar and six cents. Maybe two years ago it would have been 80. I don't know. So, that's the winner. I like all these notebooks, but let me tell you, these two, definitely the best in terms of fountain pen friendly. This one, the best in terms of value. But all of those, I think, in different ways, are good finds. These just kind of blew me away. And both of those put together aren't even $3. How cool is that? So, if you can get those anywhere near you, or if you don't have them near you, but you can order them cheaply uh, off of the websites of these places, maybe depending... Go and find these. Look at these labels and see where they're made and see because they sell them under different labels at different stores in different places and it might be easier to find these than you think even if you don't have the same stores. All right. God bless you. Enjoy your papers. Have a great week.